Hey guys, so now that we've seen some basic examples of using the conservation of energy equation to solve problems, I want to show you how this works in situations where we have resistive forces. These are basically friction, uh, different types of friction, such as air friction or water resistance, stuff like that. Let's check it out. So we can use the conservation of energy equation to solve problems with resistive forces, such as air resistance or water resistance. Many, most physics problems ignore air resistance, and most physics problems don't deal with water at all but we can use energy to solve some of these basic problems, right? And resistive force is going to work um, just like kinetic friction. If you have a box sliding to the right, kinetic friction is pulling the object, uh, the box to the left. So these resistive forces, it's in the name, they resist motion, so they will always oppose motion. Their direction will be opposite to the direction of your speed or velocity. Um, the work done by kinetic friction, if you remember, we could have simplified that as the uh, negative friction D, and we can do the same thing for all these resistive forces. So it's just going to be negative F D just the same. Okay? So the work done by any resistive force is negative F D, where D is the, the, the distance. So let's do an example here. We have a 2 kilogram object released from a height of 80, and it reaches the floor with 30. So let's draw that. 2 kilogram object, and it was released from a height of 80. Let's just say this is 80 meters. And it reaches the bottom over here with a final speed of 30. So I'm going to put V final equals 30. Let's draw a little floor there. The initial velocity, since this is released, it's released from rest. And obviously it falls that way. All right. Now, if you were to calculate this, and we can do this using the energy equation, you would see that objects released from 80 at the absence of air resistance will actually get to the bottom with about 40 meters per second. But this one is getting there a little slower. And that's because there's some air resistance. And it says, what is the amount of work done by air resistance? So the first thing I want to know is what is the work done by air resistance? So we can think of this as what is the work done by the friction of air or air friction or air resistance? Okay. Um, and we can do, we can use the work, I'm sorry, the energy equation to solve this. The big long energy equation, K initial, U initial, work non-conservative, K final, U final. And one way that you might be able to identify or realize you're supposed to use this equation is that work non-conservative is made up of the work done by U, some sort of external force, uh, plus the work done by friction. So that's what we want right here. All right, let's go through the equation here. There's no kinetic energy in the beginning because there's no velocity, it's at rest. Is there potential energy in the beginning? There is, there's potential energy because I have a height. Is there work non-conservative? Well, the work done by you is zero because you're just watching this thing fall from the top to the bottom, you don't do anything. There is the work done by friction um, because when I ask you to find the work done by air resistance, it's implied that there is some work done by air resistance, okay? That's what we're looking for. Um, at the end, is there kinetic energy? There is because just before hitting the ground, you have a speed. In fact, that speed is 30. And is there potential energy at the end? And there is no potential energy at the end because the height is zero just before you hit the bottom, okay? So we have these, um, these three terms here, one, two, three. And let's write them all out. This is MGH. Um, this is going to be replaced by just this guy, work of friction, okay? And this is half MV squared final. Now, usually you would replace work of friction with negative FD, but we want this number here. We want to find the work done by friction. So you leave it alone. You don't expand it out. Otherwise, you're going to be calculating something else that's not the work done by friction. So leave it alone. And all we got to do now is move this to the other side. So the work done by friction is half mass is 2, velocity at the bottom or speed at the bottom is 30 minus MGH. So M is 2. G, we're going to use 10 just to make it a little faster, and H is 80. If you do this, you're going to get a negative 700, which at first um, you might be confused why we're getting a negative, uh, but hopefully remember that the work done by resistive forces will, is always going to be negative. That's why we can simplify and say that it's negative FD. So this should be a negative, okay? That's good that this thing is a negative. All right, it means that friction is taking energy from the system. Now let's go for the second part here. We're done with the first one. What is the average force of air resistance? Okay. Now the force of air resistance is variable, uh, but we're not going to get into that. Um, 
So in these problems, really all you can do is find the average force of air resistance. And that's because we have um, this equation here, and the force of air resistance is this one. So we can write out this equation, and part B is much easier to calculate this. So I'm asking basically what is F? Well, the work done by F right here, we have it, it's negative 6700 equals negative F, and D is the distance um, that you fell because friction was acting on you throughout the entire fall. So it's just the distance that you moved, which in this case is your height, which is 80 meters. So this negative and this negative cancel, they become positive, and you just have that friction will be 700 divided by 80. And I have that here, that's 8.75, okay? Now, you might be wondering, isn't friction negative? Well, friction is opposite to motion, right? But this number here ends up giving you the magnitude of friction, and that's because the negative is already included here, okay? So don't worry about the fact that this is positive. It should give you a positive, all right? That's it for this one. I have a practice problem that's similar to this. It's another very typical example. Uh, we have a block being shot into a, uh, a bullet being, being, sh being shot into a block of wood or some sort of wooden wall, and then it stops. So you can use a very similar process. I want you guys to give that a shot.